I want to point out that you guys will have a chance to explore open AI products. Um, that there's a tool on um, open AI. AI stands for artificial intelligence in case anyone wasn't aware of this company yet, but for the most part, it's the, um, it's the company that uh, renders a uh, chat GPT, right? So they also have a, a, a software called uh, Dolly. Let me go into Dolly here for you. So in Dolly, you can uh, generate images using just a term. Hold on a moment. Visit Dolly. Okay. So we can test it out. Can everyone see the screen? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I will add you guys to the team so you guys can play with OpenAI products. Um, and download any images needed for the newsletters, needed for the Instagram posts, or anything else that you guys are creating, such as the presentation that you're doing right now. But for all, uh, you may find this platform helpful for that. So um, just to test it out, give me a sentence. It has to be a descriptive, detailed sentence. And we'll try to see what image it generates. What, what did you say? One eye. One eyed lion. Interesting. Should okay, should we should we create a setting what? for the lion? Yeah, like, in, yeah, in the yeah in the jungle. Okay, I think the setting. Let's hit generate, see what happens. <laughs> okay, it's still loading. Oh mm. it still gave us a lion. In a jungle with two eyes. <laughs> um, I guess. So that's interesting. Why do you think it would do that? Why do you think it wouldn't just put a one-eyed lion? What would that say about AI images? It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. That it's inaccurate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's inaccurate. And... I'm thinking that the way the coding is set up, right, with open AI uh, or artificial intelligence, the way the coding is set up, it may only understand things that actually exist, right? Like if there's no image out there of a one-eyed lion, then maybe there is no code for generating that. And then if, if it did, it probably would just look distorted. Who knows? That could be one reason. Um, but we can try something else. Let's see if the, the next... The next description will be accurate. <laughs> Let's try um, an oil painting similar to an oil painting similar to Pablo Picasso's uh, painting. Oh. Or, or Pablo Pica Picasso's uh, work. Okay, let me put then um, Pablo Picasso painting on a marble wall or something. Oh, what do you guys think? <laughs> Accurate. Uh, it's impressive, actually. Yeah, it is. It's impressive, right? So, here's the major problem that OpenAI solved stock images, right? The copywritten stock images. I, guys, I have a story to tell one day when we're. So who, have you guys heard of Grant Cordon? No. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. so Grant, I think I've seen him on TikTok before. 
Oh, he is absolutely amazing. When I learned about Grant Cardone, it was honestly only four years ago, five years ago. Um, he's been a business module for two decades, over 20 years in business. Um, he's an online sensation. As you see on his YouTube, he has 2.4 subscribers, 2.4 million subscribers. He's very uh, reputable, credible when it comes to sales. He is what you call a self-made entrepreneur. Um, he continues to lead and help people who are starting their business as a motivational speaker, as a consultant, as, you, as an educator. Going into business when I was a teacher, I watched a lot of Grant Cordon, and I think he's a great resource for you guys to um, listen to, learn from. You guys can still watch the video on that one. So I just put in the chat another link from MailChimp. Uh, it's an example of a newsletter. Um, a newsletter is another way to sell a product or service. It's also a way to inform and stay connected with your clients or customers. But in this case, um, I will ask Hannah at some point next week to work with you, Kwame, on creating a newsletter or sending out a newsletter. So perhaps Hannah creates it, you are sending it out. Um, but this is an example of a newsletter that was done for the um, Motivational Health Club, for the wellness space. So uh, this, was uh, this was created by one of our social media management interns. She has the title there. Um, she puts some content. There's a video view guide. It links to the website and so on. It looks different once it's sent in an email. Um, this is the PDF format of it. But this is important to uh, look at because you'll see you want to have the logo in every newsletter or click funnel. You want to have um, links to the websites, right? You want to have a, a video or some type of picture or visual. So all of these components will make up the click funnel or a newsletter. Followers in the client. Client, we all want them, but not everyone who follows your page will become a client. Determine your ideal client and how you will market to them. According to a recent article on Forbes.com, only 4.7% of your social following will buy from you. This number is down from the previous 10% of followers who will become sales. As markets grow and they being what was considered to be a unique niche before it starts to saturate, standing out has become even more important. It is critical to not only learn the ideal marketing strategies, but to implement them. the emphasis should be on the the value that the product is you know bringing to the to the client there is a need to emphasize uh, the value of the of the product and also uh, most times uh, there's also a need because uh, most times our client is always focusing on the money they tell you we don't have the money to do this we don't have the money to do that but in that case you let them see value you know that the product is going to bring to them when you begin to emphasize the value you know they have a look at it and they have second thoughts about about it most of the time want to see it and know that it's important or else we won't get really get into it so um, it's important to think like the customer or like the market that you are reaching out to and so choosing the images are very important um, it says here that Instagram is all about images. After all, it was the first mobile photo app of its type. And with all of the recent feature updates, having great graphics play an even bigger role in helping you to stand out among your competition. Your present and present, your brand, present your brand at its best. Um, I want to point out that my favorite feature on Instagram is the reels. So if you're, when, when you're assigned to make content on Instagram, um, definitely go with a, with, with um, uh, posting reels first because the good part with reels, as you probably know already, is you can add a photo to the cover 
So that already connects a video and a, and a photo. And you can also post it on someone's on, on your story. So it can become a story. A reel can be a story. So I like reels because it's like multifaceted, multi you can multi-purpose use. And you can even post, download it and post it to YouTube shorts. So when it, when you get into the content creation, um, look into creating one for the Instagram reels. And why that's important is the photos you choose should fit into the dimension of that feature um, of that editing software, right? So I think like Instagram reels use, um, I think it's a uh, blog or reference Yukon University. Um, these photos may seem like, oh, this is easy. I can just click and download any one of these photos that I like. Here's the problem. You want to make sure that the link, the website they're linked to is not a copywritten website um, or the image itself is not a copywritten image that belongs to someone's. And if it is, you have to definitely reference that company. So for example, if I were using this image, um, of university, the uh, University of Connecticut, if I was using this image here, I would definitely reference usnews.com, okay? Um, let me see if you could even, yeah. I would reference usnews.com. So you see here, um, if you click on the image, it opens to a gallery, and then there's actually a download option. Oh, it took me to this screen. It says, sorry, something went wrong. Please try again later. The, my point is, if there's a download option next to the image, then most likely it is okay to use their image, but you have to um, reference them. Uh, let me see if I can find an example of a website, of an image that you should not use. Um, let's say... to take a look at the PDF that I shared. Uh, let me put it in the chat again for everyone to view. All right. Um, this PDF has over, I think, 200 pages. Um, it was created a while ago, a while back. Pretty much, it gives you all the important nuggets of an, of an online business, of an of of an e-commerce business, right? And we're going to talk a bit about what those key um, key pointers are and then discuss how we will apply them um, in our tasks or why they're important, okay? This PDF you can keep and you, know, you, you can continue to look at it even after the internship if business, um, online business management is something you're, in, you're interested in. Okay, so a lot of the resources we share with you, you're more than welcome to also keep, right? Take home and um, study from where needed. Uh, let's see. Where are you? I am doing fairly well. It's been an overwhelming week, but we're at the end of it. Praise God. You'll hear me say that sometimes. Don't mind me. But how was uh, how was the presentation going coming along? I didn't even realize that the document was was uh, um, over a hundred pages. How's it coming along, guys? It's going good so far. We got half of the first one done for Cybergate Business Analyst. We have to get started on the one twenty four page one though. Got it. Okay, glad you're making strides. Uh, we see that you have a the formatting that you guys chose, the template, the the, the work efficiency is great. It's, it shows a lot about how you guys are thinking about professional presentations. And um, for the most part, there's not much to teach you guys in that area because it seems like you pretty much have a hang of it. We'll have you present what you what you have done on Monday, for the most part. Um, and then 
I want you to know you'll jump around different tasks. And I sent, I sent an email, you know, uh, talking about that. So steps to managing the tasks that you receive starting next week. Don't want you to think that you have to stick to one task for hours at a time. That will lead to mind fatigue. That will lead to physical tiredness. Uh, we don't want that from our team members. So you can work on a task for 45 minutes, move on to another one, take a, a mental break, bathroom break, get some food, and then come back to another task. For the most part, starting next week, you'll see that the task manager, um, again, if today, you know, you work on, I think you guys are working today until five, right? Are you guys both available until five today? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, um, you can take your break at three. Um, and then when you come back, if you're working on the presentation for 30 minutes, then you can do your script for 30 minutes. Just, you know, reference the, um, the, the timetable email on how you can sh uh, manage your task and not burn yourself out or feel too bored. All right. And definitely call us. As you know, you have our numbers, email. You can call us if anything happens, any questions, any changes. If you have to stop working um, because you have to go, you know, pick up your sibling or go to a doctor's appointment, just let us know, okay? We want to um, honesty and uh, open communication. Um, should I? Is there anything else we're missing, Olu, before I rush off the call and rush to the bleachers? 